Hello, I'm Cal Wellborn, agrologist with the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services Division of Plant Industry in Gainesville, Florida. I'm going to introduce the mites, or acari. Mites are arachnids. They have chelate mouth parts, a two-segmented body consisting of anathosoma and idiosoma. They usually have four pairs of walking legs. Their life cycle consists of an egg, a prelarva, up to three nymphal instars, and the adult. They are a large and diverse group. Currently, there are about 55,000 species that have been described with estimates of to a million or more yet to be described. Mites are ancient. Some living families can trace their, an their ancestors back to fossils from the Devonian. Here we have an example of some of the, not all the fossil records, but some of the fossil records. The oldest are the Acariformes, going back 410 million years. Uh, the Parasitiformes, other major group of mites, we only have records going back 100 million, and that's for a tick. And then we have Areophyids that were from the Triassic, and Opeliocarids, and Mesostigmata from the Cenozoic. 44 to 49 million years ago. Mites are everywhere. Most mites are in litter and soil, high diversity in numbers. The upper few centimeters of soil and litter can have 50,000 to 250,000 mites in more than 100 families. These mites are very important in nutrient These mites are very important in nutrient cycling in the soil. Some mites live in deep soils, up to two meters or more. Plants can serve as hosts for phytophagous mites that can do economic damage to ornamentals and agricultural pests, and some are important quarantine pests. In addition to the phytophagous mites, there are predators and fungivores on plants. Most plants have mites. Phytophagous mites have evolved at least six times. Most notable are the Tetranicoidea, the Ariophyoidea, some genera in the Tarsonemidae, and at least one family in the Eupodoidea. Other mites include fungivores, mainly orbatids, tidioids, and many of the tarsonemids. Predators include the Phytosaidae, the Deloidea, Anistidae, and Erythridae. Tropical rainforests can have mite densities of 1,000 to 10,000 mites per square meter of leaf surface, although most of these are fungivores, the orbatids. What do mites do? They do just about everything. They range from omnivores to tritivores, fungivores, predators, parasites of vertebrates, parasites of arthropods, and phytophagous mites. And this chart shows you just the range of what some of them do. In the prostigmata, a group we'll be talking about most during this, this workshop, most of them are predators, parasites of vertebrates, parasites of arthropods, and this is where most of our phytophagous mites are. Most of the predator mites in the mesostigmata are found on plants, and especially in the phytosaidae. What is a mite? A mite is, is an arachnid that consists of two body parts, the nathosoma and the idiosoma. And they're divided into two major groups, the parasitiformes and the acariformes. Here's a classification of the acari. There are two major groups. Parasitiformes and the Acariformes. We'll talk about each group separately and some of the characters used to identify each of these groups. We'll start with the Parasitiformes. Four major groups within the Parasitiformes the Opeliocarids, the Holothyroids, these are small groups that you're not likely to find in an agricultural situation. The Exodia or the Ticks show up in agricultural situations or on, on animals used in agriculture. Mesostigmata range from predators to parasites, and many of our, our predators on plants come from mesostigmata, especially in the family Phytosaidae. What do mesostigmata mites do? There are some that are detritivores and fungivores. Many are parasites of vertebrates. Many are parasites of arthropods. And many are predators. As stated previously, the family Phytosaidae is the main pre predator mite on plants. Some of the characters of the Parasitiformes, they have lateral stigmata and paratremes. The coxae are free-moving segments. 
They have a hypostomal groove on the ventral side of the nathosoma. Nathosomal tectum is present on the upper side of the nathosoma. Palps are linear with the tarsal apoteal. Clistery are usually chelate dentate, and the tritosternum is usually present. Here is the lateral stigmata and paratremes and the mesostigmatid mite. Here is the stigmata, and you have the paratreme extending anteriorly along the lateral edge of the mite. This is coxal leg two, leg four, leg three, leg two, and leg one. Free moving coxal segments. This figure shows coxal fields legs one, two, and three. And you can see here that each coxal segment is a discrete segment. It is a movable segment, followed by the trochanter. Nathosomal tectum. This is on the upper side of the nathosome. This is a structure that covers over the part of the na dorsal nathosoma. It can be very simple or it can be ornamented with uh, projections. And you can see here three projections on this particular uh, tectum. In this view over here, the tectum is very reduced. It's not very, and it can be very difficult to see. Hypostomal groove. This is on the ventral side of the nathosoma, subcapitulum. This is a groove down the center of the subcapitulum. It may have uh, teeth-like structures. Palps are linear with a tarsal apoteal. Here we have palps. We have the palp tarsus, palp tibia, palp genu. And right here on the palp tarsus, we have a claw-like structure, palp tarsal ap apoteal. Look on the other side here, we have a palp tarsus, a palp apoteal, palp tibia, palp genia. Clistera are usually chelate. Their chelate consists of a fixed digit, a movable digit, and a clistral base. It's pretty consistent through most of the mesostigmata. Try to sternum, the structure on the ventral side of the idiosoma, anterior end, just anterior to the uh, sternal region, it's usually bifurcate. A cariformes. Cariformes consist of two major groups, the trombitiformes and the sarcoptiformes. For agricultural purposes, most of our mice that we're concerned with are in the prostigmata. The Orbatids are fungivores primarily, but we also have the astigmata, which is a modified orbatid, and they can be pests of stored products. What do careform mites do? Well, there's some that are in, uh, omnivores. Many are detritivores and fungivores. Uh, some are predators, but when we get to the prostigmata, the majority of the ones are, are, are there's a lot of predators. Uh, some are parasites of vertebrates, parasites of arthropods. And again, some of the astigmata are parasites of arthropods and vertebrates. Prostigmata, we have a lot of parasites of vertebrates and arthropods. More importantly, the phytophagous mites. There are a few in the orbatids, but most phytophagous mites and the important phytophagous mites are in the prostigmata. The careform life cycle consists of egg, prelarva, larva, protonymph, duodenymph, trionymph, and adult. Eggs, uh, we're still learning a lot about eggs and finding that some eggs can actually, some eggs can be used to actually identify uh, prostigmatid mites. Here we have a, a delid egg here. These are uh, uh, erythriidae, erythriid eggs. This is the egg of polyphagal tarsinemus latus characteristic of this particular species. And this is a spider mite egg with a stipe. Prelarva. In most cases, you'll never see a prelarva unless you're rearing the mites. In many cases, the prelarva is very reduced and hardly noticeable. But what happens is the egg chorion splits and the prelarva there, it's, in most cases, it's non-active, doesn't feed. There are a few families that have what we call elatostase prelarvae. These are active prelarvae. They're not fully developed. They don't have uh, all the CD and all the other structures that a normal larva would have. 
They're usually active for only a few hours, become quiescent, and then within a few days to a week, molt into the actual larva. The larva in most mites are hexapods, three pairs of legs, and then the protonymph, duonymph, trinymph, and adult, in most cases, are octopods. Some of the characters of the cariformes, coxae are fused to the body. In this view, we're looking at coxal fields, legs three and four, on the ventral side of a pentheliid mite. You can see here, there is no apodeme separating the coxa from the ventral of the idiosoma. It's all one, one structure that's fused. So the coxae are not a movable body segment. Stigmata and paratremes. They're usually between the clissary or on the clissary or absent. In this chylated, you can see part of the, the paratremes here, the stigmata would be right about here in the middle. In the spider mite here, you can see the paratremes coming out and hooking around, hooking. Here is another other paratreme. The stigmata is actually down inside here. This is the stylophore of the tetranicid mite. Here's a tuckerellid, here's the paratremes, an immature, and here's an emergent paratreme in an adult. Prodorsal trichobothria, present or absent. By prodorsal trichobothria, we're talking about a structure that has a what we'll call a bothridial base. This is a pit-like structure that the ceta comes out of. In this case, here's the bothridial base, but the ceta is missing. When you look at it under a high power magnification, you see that it's actually a cup-like structure, whereas normal CD, just their, their articulation is right there on the surface of the, the cuticle. Here's a close-up of a bothridial base and a normal ceta. You see the normal ceta, there is no pit around it. It's just the base is right there on the surface. Whereas in the trichobothria, the bothridial base is a, a pit. And then over here is even a, a enlarged view showing the bothridial base. The palps are linear, reduced, or thumb claw. In some groups, the palps are linear. In other groups, they have what we call thumb claw. And this is a claw-like structure on the palp tibia. And the palp tarsus may be reduced or moved so it, it's more lateral than terminal. Here's another example. Here's the palp tarsus. Here's the palp tibial claw-like uh, ceta. There's the looking on at a tetranicidae. This is the looking at the head of the tetranicidae. We're looking at the nat Here's looking at the anterior end of a, of a tetranicidae. This is the palps, this is the palp tibia. This is the palp tibial claw-like ceta or claw. Here's the palp tarsus. On this side you can see the palp tarsus here. And then the palp tibia and the, the claw or claw-like ceta. This particular ceta here is the spinneret. This is where spider mites that produce silk produce silk from. Clissera are usually modified. Uh, primitively, the, the clissera can be chelate with a fixed digit, movable digit, and a clisseral base. Most acariformes, especially the prostigmata, have a modified clissera. This is the two movable digits of the clissera. They're modified into a long stylet-like structure. Prodorsal eyes are usually present they don't actually see images. We believe they have, can tell light and dark, but they don't use them to see, actually see images. So the characteristics of the cariformes, coxy fused to the body, stigmata and paratremes between clissary or absent, prodorsal trichobothria, present or absent, palps linear, reduced or with a thumb claw, clissary are, are usually modified with the fixed digit being reduced or absent and the movable digit
be modified into a stylet or stylet-like structure. Verdorsal eyes are usually present. Here are some characters that separate the cariformes from parasitiformes. Again, the hypostomal groove, the tritosternum, the nathosomal tectum, palp, ap, palp tarsal apatheal, dorsal sejugal furrow is absent. We have, we'll talk about that later. Trichobothra is never present in the parasitiformes, present or absent in the cariformes. Gentle papillae are absent in the parasitiformes. We'll talk about those later. And uh, the parasitiformes have the lateral stigmata and paratremes. And the coxae are movable segments as opposed to coxae fused to the body in the cariformes. Any questions? How can I differentiate a bathridial base from a normal base if the ceda is missing? When we talk about prodorsal trichobothra, we're talking mainly about the base. The base of, of the prodorsal trichobothra is a cup-like structure, and regardless of whether the ceda is still there or not, regardless of whether the ceda is there or not, you'll always see the, the, the cup-like structure will still be present. So what you look for, if the ceda is missing, you look for the cup-like structure. Uh, if, a ceda, if it's not a bothridial base, it'll just, you'll just see the cetal base there on the surface, of the, on the surface and no, no cup, cup-like structure. What are the functions of the stigmata and the paratremes? The stigmata is the opening into the respiratory system in the mite, and the paratreme just extends the surface area for gas exchange with the, with the, with the mite. What character should I look at first when initially trying to identify a mite? First thing I look, I look at is the clistery. From there, I look at the pretarsis and the prodorsum. After that, I look at the opistosomal CD to see how many there are and, and what numbers. And from there, I'll frequently go on and start with a key. <laughs>